Hey, so this is not a review video on the iFlight Nazgul 5. So I actually haven't even flown this yet. <laughs> so why would this video be relevant or valuable to you whatsoever? So I think there's enough reviews out there of the Nazgul 5. Um, what I wanted to talk about and what I thought may be valuable and relevant to you is to understand from a perspective of an end user of how they, I, selected the Nazgul 5. And that way you can have some sort of context in the decisions that you're making and you may be thinking, oh yeah, I, I was thinking the exact same thing and maybe I should do that too. Or maybe you're like, oh, that's not a concern of mine. Um, that's not a reason I would get the Nazgul 5. So the point of the video isn't to convince you one way or other to get the Nazgul 5 or not get the Nazgul 5. It's to just help you in context again to decide um, how to pick a quad, if that makes sense, for you personally. And so to do that and then hear from perspective of someone else might be helpful. What was the main thing for me is a lot of reviews on these praising the Nazgul 5 came from end users which is kind of unique and really important to me. So when you're looking at professional reviewers' reviews of quads, it seems like end of the video, every quad is the next best thing. <laughs> and so I'm not knocking reviewers, professional reviewers, because they do bring good value to the market and help expose uh, different quads that are out there that we may not otherwise know exist. And so in that perspective, it's great. And then they do go into a lot of the detail about the components, um, you know, fancy pictures, flight videos, footage of the quads themselves. But what I think is missing in the market is the perspective of an end user. And so um, that's partly why I want to make this video. And again, uh, one of the reasons why I bought it is because there was a lot of praise from end users. People use it for more than just a week of testing, but people plan to use it regularly, daily for hopefully a longer period of time. And so because of popularity, one of the things that, that attracts me is that there is support. So whenever I buy a quad or an RC car or a real car or another product, it's important for me to find that there's support for that so that if I have issues with it or problems with it, that I, there's a community I can turn to that can help me with it. And so I'm not just kind of stuck there. And so the Nazgul 5 is popular enough where there's a lot of support and a lot of community um, of people who own this quad and have uh, more experience than I do that I can turn to if I do need end up needing help. And so because of popularity too, there are going to be, and there already are uh, vendors who supply parts and everything and replacement parts for the Nazgul 5. When you get to home built quads or other quads that may not be as popular, it may be harder to find parts and pieces that you need. And so I had kind of had that experience with GEPRC. GEPRC is a known brand, but a lot of their material is not available from vendors that I found. And then you have to get it straight from GEPRC, which is in China. And so delivery times takes a little bit longer, shipping's a little bit more expensive. And so I wanted something that had parts that were readily available in the US that I can get fairly soon if I needed that at the end. Now the reason why I picked the Nazgul 5 has to do with the flexibility of a DJI system. So some of you may be thinking, do I wanna spend the money on a DJI system, which is $150 more, plus the cost of the goggles, which is close to $600. And so um, I had gone back and forth too, do I want the digital, do I want the analog? And at the end of it, I did decide on the analog version. And the purpose of, or the reason for that is the price and the flexibility. So I, this frame uh, does support the DJI system in case I want to do that in the future. Um, value wise too, the digital version of this, the DJI version costs $150 more. And $150 is the price of the internal components of DJI to come that um, are in here. So if you're going to get the DJI one straight packaged here, ready to go, then you're paying 150 more, which would make sense for the DJI system, but you're not getting the analog version. So you're paying $150 for a replacement component. Whereas if you get the analog one and you spend $150 later, you get to, you have essentially a free analog system. So that, that, you know, value wise was a decision making factor for me as well. This is my first five inch quad. I have been flying, whoops and micro quads for the past year since the pandemic, which is probably similar to some of you guys. Um, I built uh, one whoop called the Shutterbug 85 
uh, using a Crazy B F4 version three flight controller. And so I built a couple of those. And um, as far as my experience goes, it's mostly micro quads and whoops. And so this is my first five inch quad. I don't wanna be flying a huge thing that can potentially hurt people or hurt myself until I learn to fly comfortably smaller quads that I can have more opportunity to fly indoors and that I can fly in small parks or, or when no one's around. I have a GoPro Hero 3 from, I guess, many, many years ago, which I may put on this um, uh, just to kind of test out and see how it flies with the weight. But I do plan to get a Hero 8 eventually when time comes. Now, one thing about this quad is Crossfire. So Crossfire is an option and that's what these antennas are. I've been flying exclusively FR Sky XM Plus for the past year. And so one thing about the Crossfire is the availability or scarcity of availability of the Tango 2 Pro. And so I had ordered that pre-ordered from Race Day Quads about six weeks ago and they still don't have it. And I'm not knocking Race Day Quads. They've been great for every other purchase. It's probably not their fault that they don't have inventory of the Tango 2 Pro. But they did shut down the availability to pre-order it because they're having trouble basically getting inventory to fulfill the current pre-orders. And so that's not anything that's necessarily unusual with the vendor so far. But if you are gonna get the Crossfire, just know that you may have a hard time finding the Tango 2 if that's what you wanted to, to fly this with. Because I do like the kind of small game controller style uh, remote uh, versus the larger squared ones, just for flexibility and be able to bring it around places and the feel of it I happen to like better. Apart from deciding between digital versus analog, you also have the choice between 4S or 6S. So I was contemplating that for a while, talking to people back and forth, doing some research, and I ultimately decided on the 4S version. And so if you're not aware, usually low voltage matches high KV and high voltage matches low KV. So what does that mean? A lot of people are looking to buy the 6S quad, but fly it on 4S. So that doesn't quite work in the same way as 4S would work on a 4S quad because the motor sizes are different. So when you fly a 4S, when you fly a 6S quad using 4S, it's going to feel very laggy. But obviously you have the option of using 6S. When you buy a 4S quad, you do not have the option of using 6S. You can modify things through software through Betaflight to kind of dumb down the voltage and how that works with the quad. Um, there are reviewers, reviews or videos about that which is beyond the scale of this video or scope of this video that you do that have that option i did want to go with the 4s and so the reason for that has to do with number one the battery prices <laughs> so the battery prices for 4s versus 6s is fairly substantial especially when you're buying a number of batteries so for me i like to have ideally eight batteries per quad and what that allows me to do is to continuously field charge so by, by the time I'm done flying the last pack, the first two packs that I've been charging um, are complete and ready to go. And basically you just kind of keep going, keep going until your source battery runs out of juice. And so that's kind of how I thought of it as far as 4S and 6S. The argument for f flying or buying a 6S one is because 6S is the new standard. Yes, 6S is the new standard for five inch quads, but don't forget that for S was, was the standard at one point for five inch quads. So 4S four four isn't necessarily under par by any means. Um, 6S, what you're gonna get from the benefit of 6S, from what I've heard, because again, I haven't flown this, I haven't flown 6S, but you can do your own research obviously, but to hear kind of a summary from me may be helpful on uh, learning what terms to research and what topics to look at. But 6S tends to have more consistency in the flight. So you're not gonna have as much noticeable sag. And so the amount of input in the throttle that you put throughout the flight will be more of the same through the flight. Whereas with 4S, you may feel it kind of lagging towards the end of the flight. And so that may or may not be important to some of you. Um, a lot of times people also talk about 6S being or having more flight time. So yes, more flight time, but from what I've read, it's only like 30 seconds. So for most people, that's not gonna matter. If you are flying this for racing competition, 
then those 30 seconds may matter to you a lot because you do need to finish those laps. If you don't finish those laps, then you're basically out of the race and you're, you have no chance of winning. But for most of us who are flying casually freestyle, 4S I think is gonna be more than sufficient, um, but we'll see. I'm not the type to be flying as fast as I can with a quad, even a five inch quad. Um, the point is just to get good footage, not even get good footage, but to enjoy the flying experience in real time. And a lot of that may be freestyle movements, not necessarily moving quickly. Um, but that, that's just my take on it. That's just my style of flying and what I'm looking to pursue with the 4S uh, version. So make as you will. Uh, you may want to do that, you may not, but that's just kind of my perspective. Um, so I was across Facebook groups and I came across someone who mentioned he got the Tango 2 Pro quickly. And I was like, what source is that? Tell me, tell me. And so when he gave me the source, I was a little bit wary, obviously, because it wasn't race day quads, it wasn't pyro drone, it wasn't get FPV, it wasn't newbie drone. And those are the four sources that I use exclusively. I mean, I buy from Banggood and AliExpress all the time, but when I'm buying a quad, um, I do want to buy from a local or domestic US dealer. Uh, definitely don't want to buy from Amazon because Amazon has such a good return policy that there are a lot of returns. And so you may be getting a product that was in the hands of someone else and they may have messed it up. And Amazon's not so good about looking over return products before reselling. <laughs> so you don't really want to get full quads from Amazon because you may get a dud. Um, if, I mean, I'd be more uncomfortable buying propellers and other uh, components, but as far as the quad itself, you do want to get from a reliable company. And so when I heard the source of where to get the Tango 2, it was a company called Buddy RC. And so I was a little bit wary because Buddy RC, I've never heard of them before, but that's the source that he got it from and I believed him. And so I put my order in and I'm actually expecting the Tango 2 Pro to be delivered today. So that's going to be exciting for me. Um, but in the meantime, I did want to give or provide a video regarding perspective of someone who was looking to buy a Nazgul 5 and how I ultimately decided on that. And again, it's to provide you context so that you can kind of see in context uh, what your thoughts are. So if you have any comments you want to write down below, uh, I'd be happy to hear it. Um, we can kind of start a conversation there. But um, that's the end of this video, and then we'll probably have a next one on my review once I finally put in about 50 packs. Because I normally don't do reviews until I put at least 50 to 100 packs through an RC car or a quad. So I don't think there's any value in just flying around for a few minutes and talking about it. So um, it may be a while, but uh, hopefully it'll be worth it when I do that video, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right, take care. Bye-bye.